Hey everyone, welcome to today's lesson on the MRI of the vascular head and neck. In this lesson, we will look at some anatomy on an MRA of the head, MRV of the head, an MRA of the neck, and MRV of the neck. Let's get started. MRA scans clearly demonstrate the arterial system in the head, also known as the circle of Willis, COW. Let's look at some important structures on MIP images of these studies. For the following images, the MIP has been turned in a way to demonstrate all of the vessels. On an MRA of the head, one important structure is the anterior cerebral artery. This is easy to identify as it is always in the front or anterior. The internal carotid artery and middle cerebral arteries look a bit like a tree. The internal carotid artery is the trunk of the tree. The middle cerebral artery are the branches. One way to look at the posterior circulation of the MRA is like a stick figure with no head. The arms of the stick figure are the right and left posterior cerebral arteries. The body of the figure is the basilar artery, and the legs are the right and left vertebral arteries. The connectors of the circle of Willis are the anterior communicating artery and the posterior communicating artery. These are very small structures and sometimes may not be fully visible. Now that we have seen the images in an oblique orientation, let's look at the structures in a true coronal, sagittal, and axial orientation. Here we can see the anterior cerebral arteries, middle cerebral arteries, and internal carotid arteries. For the posterior circulation, the posterior cerebral arteries, basilar artery, and vertebral arteries are visible. On the true sagittal view, the anterior cerebral arteries, middle cerebral arteries, and internal carotid arteries are seen. For the posterior circulation, we can see the posterior cerebral arteries, basilar artery, and vertebral arteries. For the true axial view, the anterior cerebral arteries, middle cerebral arteries, and internal carotid arteries are seen. For the posterior circulation, the posterior cerebral arteries and basilar artery are easily identified. MRV scans demonstrate the venous drainage of the head, occurring in the venous sinuses. These sinuses are located between the endosteum and the meningeal dura, or between the layers of the dura mater. These channels do not contain valves like other veins in the body. In this image, the superior sagittal sinus is demonstrated as the most superior bright signal. The transverse sinus can be seen emerging laterally from the confluence of sinuses. The confluence of sinuses is just a term meaning where the superior sagittal and transverse sinuses meet. The sigmoid sinus is located more inferiorly and is thus named due to its S-shaped appearance. The straight sinus is located in the line of the junction of the falx cerebri and the tentorium cerebelli. Now, let's take a look at some important structures on a MIP image of an MRA of the neck. At the bottom of the image, the aortic arch can be seen where the brachiocephalic trunk, left common carotid artery, and left subclavian artery are originating. The brachiocephalic artery then branches into the right subclavian and right common carotid artery. The left common carotid artery originates from the aortic arch. Moving superiorly, the common carotid artery bifurcates around C4 into the internal common carotid artery and external carotid artery. The vertebral arteries both originate from the respective subclavian artery. On occasion, a study of the veins of the neck may be needed. Regarding important veins in the neck, the internal jugular vein drains blood from the brain. This vein is a continuation of the sigmoid sinus. The internal vein unites with the subclavian vein. The external jugular vein is located close to the angle of the mandible and terminates draining into the subclavian vein. Thanks for watching. This has been an overview of the vascular head and neck as seen in MRI imaging.